हेलो स्टूडेंट्स कैन यू हियर मी जस्ट अ मिनट आई एम फेसिंग सम वीडियो ऑडियो इश्यू I hope you can hear my voice. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Today we are going to start with sampling distribution of difference of means. Let me share my screen. you have any doubt in yesterday's discussion if you have any doubt please ask so yesterday we were at this example so have you completed this example heights of 3000 students are normally distributed With mean is equal to sixty-eight inches and standard deviation of three inches, and eighty samples of size twenty-five are obtained. So, what you what would you expect the mean and standard deviation of the resulting sampling distribution of means? If sampling distribution is done, sorry, sampling is done without and with replacement so you can solve same example without replacement also you can solve it so in the present situation we are solving it with replacement so have you completed this example if how many samples will have mean in between 66.8 and 68.3 i think i have solved this part so we observed that sample mean is equal to population mean which is 68 before the central limit theorem we came across this particular result that sample mean mu suffix x bar when i say x bar is the sample mean and that is always equal to the population mean and population mean is given in the example mu is equal to 68 inches population means whole set of 3000 students you are considering it its mean is 68 inches and sample mean is always equal to the population mean so mu x bar is mu which is 68 okay and stand Yes. Can you hear me, students? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ha. Huh. So, so please be bear with me because uh, yesterday and today also I came across many technical problems. In fact, everyone in the college is facing the problem because they have started with some updation of Wi-Fi, whatever. I don't know. and we are facing lots of internet wifi fluctuations at our end in fact moodle is hanged because end some examination of first year is going on and because of that you know for common courses there are near about 800 900 student per course 
and if the examination of at least even if one course is there yesterday there was uvc examination of first year students so total 900 students were there in between 11 to 12:30 pm in which our lecture timing was there 12:10 and uh, because of that there was too much pressure on the moodle and i was unable to in fact i'm facing webex issues also so therefore uh, anyhow so let us not waste the time because we have already wasted five minutes so presently technical issues are going on in the college so let me just ha huh. so standard deviation of sampling distribution of means we denote it by sigma yeah. yes precious okay hmm hope it is visible standard deviation of sampling distribution of means is is the population standard deviation sigma divided by square root of n okay so this also we have observed yesterday and it is equal to 3 upon square root of 25 n is the sample size so you know we have considered 80 samples of size 25 and sigma is 3 which is the population standard deviation and it is 3 upon square root of 25 which is equal to 0.6 inches so this is a uh, standard deviation and the mean of sampling distribution of means and then we need to find out how many of this samples will have their averages lying in between 66.8 and 68.3 so central limit theorem is applicable over here so it is applicable in two cases firstly if your sample size is greater equal 30 and your if your basic distribution is the normal distribution uh so either of the cases if it is there we can approximate x bar which is the sample average by the normal random variable z now the question is how will you approximate x bar which is the sample mean by the normal random variable z so this is by this way so z is the normal random variable which is our usual notation for a standard normal random variable and we consider corresponding average of x bar means mean of sampling distribution of means and that e that is equal to mu which is the population mean we observed yesterday i took one illustration also on central limit theorem if you remember mu x bar means sample mean matches with or is equal to the population mean and standard deviation of sampling distribution of means okay is equal to sigma upon square root of n it was 2.32 2.32 if you remember we observed yesterday so therefore we can approximate x bar which is the sample mean the random variable of the sample mean uh, by the standard normal random variable z and you know how the normalized standard random variable looks like so it is whatever your is your original random variable minus its average divided by its standard deviation and we know that x bar its standard deviation is sigma by root n so therefore we are dividing by sigma by root n and not just by sigma okay so so i have to find out now how many sample averages how many samples and their means lying in between 66.8 and 68.3 so if the question is how many and it's actually not they are asking directly the probability first we find the probability so you know when i multiply the probability value or figure which is up to four decimal places generally we find if you use the statistical tables that are given at the end of your textbook we will write for example here i am getting the answer 0.6687 and if i multiply by this probability value with 100 i will get the percentage how many percentage out of 80 samples will lie in between 66.8 and 68.3 and then we can find out how many samples will have their average lying in between the given range so this is how so later on things are you, you know how to do it it's mechanical you have to find out corresponding standard and uh, random variable value corresponding to 66.8 which is i'm getting as minus 2 i hope all of you have checked this calculations which are i hope is correct corresponding values of sigma and n so all parameters are clear to all of you Uh, is there any ambiguity that mu is not understood sigma is not understood notation is not understood uh, everything is very important so z1 is the corresponding standard random variable value which is minus to corresponding to 66.8 and corresponding to 68.3 
the ra random variable value, normal random variable value is 0.5. So then we apply the statistical tables, normal distribution tables, and we'll get the probability that 0.6687 is the probability that your sample average will lying between the given range. And then what you have to find out how many of them. So 66.87% of samples will have their mean in between these. So into 80, because we have considered total 80 samples. Out of 80, we will be having 53.496. But you know, number of samples I cannot measure in fractional numbers. It has to be an integer. So what is the nearest integer? So after the decimal place, which number it is, it is 4. If it is beyond 5, I'll, uh, uh, what you can say, approximate it to the next integer. Because number of samples is an integer. Now, I cannot say that I am at 53.496 sample. It's at, it's having no meaning. So, because of this point, uh, 4 after point, after the decimal point, I will call it as 53 samples. If this number goes beyond 5, I will call it as the 54 samples. So, it goes to next integer if you are digit after the decimal point is for your above similarly you can see the, the you, you you can solve the remaining part of the question so i hope everybody have understood what we have discussed yesterday if you have any doubt you can ask me any doubt up to here uh, shall i proceed hmm? Shall I proceed? Yes, yes ma'am. Hmm. So, a sampling distribution of the difference between two means is the next topic. Of course, it depends upon the sampling distribution of means that we have just now studied. Now, there is an important theorem which says about the difference between two means of two different samples okay so let me just scroll further so just a minute huh? i just want to go to previous slide uh -huh. so let me just first of all read the theorem if if independent samples of size n1 and n2 are drawn at random from two populations populations might be discrete or might be continuous means one by one you can pick up the sample or you will be having a continuous random variable then we call it as the continuous population and your populations are having means mu1 and mu2 respectively so you are having two different populations i will call it as a population p1 let me just draw some figures then you will understand so p1 is your first sample sorry population and uh, p2 is your second population okay now what are the parameters that are associated with the population mu1 which is the population mean okay and mu2 is the population mean for the second population set and the another parameter you know with respect to population that we can assign is sigma 1 square what is sigma 1 square students notation and sigma 2 square will be the another population parameter which i will assign to population p2 now what is sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square so it's a population variance for the first set of population and sigma 2 square is the population variance for the second population set okay now what i will do from the first population set that i have drawn with the i will consider a sample of size n1 so s1 is suppose the sample of size n1 so so what is the size of this s1 s1 is the sample from first population and n1 is the size of that first sample is one from the first population we have drawn at random and the another population p2 we are having it from it i will just dig out or i will just have pick up i will pick up a random sample of size n2 which i will call it as a sample s2 having size n2 okay 
Now, how many parameters you can associate with S1 and S2? So, you know, for the sample, I can find out its average. So, suppose X1 bar is the mean of first sample S1 that you have drawn from P1, from first population, and X2 bar is the average or mean of the second sample from the second population. So, X1 bar is the mean of random sample of size N1 drawn from the population P1 and X2 is the mean of random sample of size N2 drawn from the population P2. Okay. So, you just note that sample drawn from P2 is independent to that of sample drawn from population P1. Okay. Listen to me carefully. Suppose I choose S2 which is a second sample from second population at random. Is it going to affect your S1 which is the first sample from your first population P1? No. These two are independent populations and therefore the choice of S1 and choice of S2 is independent. Okay. So now the question is what we can say about the sampling distribution of difference X1 bar minus X2 bar for repeated samples of size n1 and n2 you understood my question let me repeat the question i am expecting or i am trying to find out the sampling distribution of difference of means x1 bar minus x2 bar for repeated samples of size n1 so so here just one sample s1 and s2 so similarly you can try out many many pairs S1, S2 is suppose the first pair of two samples from P1 and P2. I can have another sample S1 dash from P1 and S2 dash from P2. So what you can say about the difference between their means? So that's my question. And first thing that you have to note that according to central limit theorem, X1 bar and X2 bar are both approximately normally distributed with means mu1 and mu2 and variances sigma 1 square by n1 and sigma 2 square by n2. Am I right? What central limit theorem says students? Central limit theorem says that sampling distribution of mean you can approximate with a normal random variable and what is the mean of that normal random variable? It's same as your population mean. So mu x bar is the mean of that sample and what is the variance variance is sigma square by n therefore standard deviation is sigma by root n by which we are dividing okay so let us note these points so let me write few things so first of all i will write my aim so my aim is what we can say about the sampling distribution of difference of means. Okay. So, what we can say about sampling distribution of not just x bar, but about the differences between the two averages. Yeah. So, sampling distribution of the difference. We are going to see, see the examples. On this concept of course okay and so that's my aim and you just have to note that x1 bar which is the average so what is x1 bar look at this figure x1 bar is the average of first sample s1 that you have drawn from p1 so I know x1 bar I can approximate with z means I can normalize it now so, normalize, we can normalize it with mu x1 bar you can say or mu1 whatever you notation you use. So, suppose mu x of x, x, x1 bar is the mean of x1 bar and its standard deviation is what? You know its standard deviation is sigma1 upon square root of n1. Am I right? And the second sample that you have drawn from second population is having x2 bar as its mean, okay, which we can normalize with mean 
what will be the mean of x2 bar we can normalize it with the mean mu x2 bar say and the standard deviation sigma 2 which is the standard deviation of second population in our notation dividing by n2 which is the size of sample s2 from the second population so is this understood why i can say this this is by which theorem this is by central limit theorem am i right okay average of sample we can approximate with a normal random variable with mu uh, with mean mu x bar and standard deviation sigma by root n this is our general central limit theorem that i have applied separately for x1 bar and x2 bar this is by central limit theorem now what is my aim my aim is i have to extend the central limit theorem for the difference of these two means x1 bar and x2 bar so now you tell me how will you start or how how you can extend it for the differences between two means so for that you have to recall one theorem which we have already studied if you remember before test 2 i have used this theorem somewhere in the derivation of some point it but let me state it again so this is theorem 7.11 from your textbook sorry so you just recall this theorem it's very simple theorem and the theorem says that if capital y is the random variable which is the linear combination of n random variables so a1 a2 are constant so you i hope you know what is meant by linear combination so i am taking linear combination of n random variables x1 x2 xn are random variables a1 a2 an are constants and y is the combination of all those random variables so y is actually a new random variable okay then what you can say about the mean of y so it will be having some distribution no? so in this case mu suffix y is a linear combination of the averages of x1 x2 xn and so on so if if mu1 is the average of first random variable x1 its distribution of course mu2 is the average of second random variable and mu n is the average of nth random variable then the average of y will be again a linear combination of their averages and the another parameter with respect to a random variable and its distribution we can attach is the variance variance of y so when i say suffix y it is not just the linear combination of their variances but its a1 square sigma 1 square where sigma 1 is the variance of x1 a2 square sigma 2 square where sigma 2 square is the variance of x2 an square sigma n square where sigma n is the variance of xn so this is the theorem that we can apply now to find out now you tell me what is your new random variable what is my aim i have to find out sampling distribution of the difference x1 bar minus x2 bar so what is the new random variable we are having is x1 bar minus x2 bar to which i will apply this theorem this theorem okay so what you can say about the average of x1 bar minus x2 bar with this theorem what is your a1 and a2 in this case what is the new random variable is the difference between two averages correct this implies is that what is mu y mu y is a1 so what is a1 and a2 students if you relate it with this theorem 7.11 what is a1 and a2 1 and 1 and Nine, a1 minus 1 minus 1 correct so what i will do i will put a1 so we are having only two random variables and their differences in fact and you know difference you can consider as the addition of a negative of the another so a1 is 1 and a2 is minus 1 with that i will go so a1 is 1 a2 is minus 1 correct so what will be the average of differences of means of samples 
it will be a1 which is 1 mu x1 bar which is the sample average of the first sample from population p1 minus mu x2 bar what is meant by mu suffix x1 bar hey notation karta hai ka tumhala mu suffix x1 bar manje ka मी जेव्हा नुसतं म्यू म्हणते त्याचा अर्थ काय होतो आणि जेव्हा मी म्यू एक्स वन बार म्हणते त्याचा अर्थ काय होतो किंवा म्यू एक्स बार म्हणते याचा अर्थ काय होतो सो पॉप्युलेशन मीन इज म्यू अँड म्यू एक्स बार वेन आय से इट्स अ सॅम्पल मीन वेअर द सॅम्पल इज चुजन फ्रॉम दॅट पॉप्युलेशन सो आता इथे मला सांगा सो म्यू एक्स वन बार इज द sample mean that you have taken from the first population s1 and mu suffix x2 bar is the sample that you have chosen from the second population ya figure kade bagaycha okay so so uh, when i find out the mean of s2 it is mu suffix x2 bar and when i find out the mean of s1 it is mu suffix ha huh. but yesterday we have seen that mu x bar is same as mu okay mean of sampling distribution of means is same as the population mean so can i say this as mu1 minus mu2 simply yes ma'am okay so mu suffix y is same as where y is this y is x1 bar minus x2 bar and the reason for this is mu x bar is same as mu okay and what you can say about the variance then sigma square y ka asel i know that is a1 square sigma 1 square so basically it is sigma x1 bar square okay so a1 square sigma x1 bar square plus a2 square sigma x2 bar square but you know a1 is 1 and a2 is minus 1 so even if i take squares you will be having the addition only so this is 1 square i'll just write for your understanding and what is sigma x1 bar whole square students sigma x1 bar manje kay it's a sample 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 standard deviation barobar आणि जेव्हा मी सिग्मा एक्स वन बार स्क्वेअर म्हणते सो इट इज सॅम्पल व्हेरियन्स बरोबर सो कॅन यू रिलेट सॅम्पल व्हेरियन्स सो वॉट इज सॅम्पल व्हेरियन्स कॅन यू रिलेट इट विथ द पॉप्युलेशन व्हेरियन्स सॅम्पल ॲव्हरेज इज इक्वल टू द पॉप्युलेशन ॲव्हरेज but what about the sample variance is it is it equal to population variance divided by n ha huh. yes so sample variance is not exactly equal to the population variance but you have to divide it by n isn't it so sigma x1 bar is sigma by n where sigma is the population variance and similarly sigma suffix x2 bar whole square means the sample variance of the second sample is so basically here you are having sigma 1 and n1 na? because we are finding it for the first population so sigma 1 is the population variance of first population in our notation if you remember barobar sigma 1 is the standard deviation of first population so sigma 1 square is the variance of first population and sigma 2 square is the variance of second population so so what is sigma x2 bar whole square what is the sample variance is its population variance which is sigma 2 square divided by divided by what the population size or sample size population size is not given is sample size what is the sample size n2 am i right and sigma x bar square similarly is sigma 1 square by n1 hey lakshat alaka is this clear 
Yes, ma'am. Huh. And then you substitute just here. Here you substitute. Because I am trying to find out this. No? So, sigma x1 bar is sigma 1 square by n1. A2 is minus 1, which we already noted. And sigma 2 square by n2 is the sample variance of second population. So, this is in totality sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 which is sigma suffix y whole square so which is basically i am finding variance of difference of means because y is x1 bar minus x2 bar okay so now can you extend the central limit theorem to the difference of means can you extend central limit theorem to the difference of means so yes we can extend central limit theorem to the difference of means so if you have understood this discussion just now i told you you can understand this theorem so this is basically the extension of central limit theorem nothing else it's not at all new thing we are just extending the idea so so central limit theorem we're extending to the difference of means that's it so let me read this theorem again the theorem says that if the independent samples of size n1 and n2 are drawn at random from two populations with means mu1 and mu2 and their variances of populations uh, these are population variances sigma1 square and sigma2 square respectively then the sampling distribution of differences of means x1 bar minus x2 bar is approximately normally distributed with a mean and variance given by so what is the mean of the difference of means simply mu1 minus mu2 and what is the variance of difference of means sigma1 square by n1 plus sigma2 square by n2 is this understood this last statement yes. ah, so just now i explained you how this is coming and therefore how will you how will you approximate it with z so instead of just x bar now i'll be having the difference of means x1 bar minus x2 bar which is my random variable minus its average just now we have noted it is the difference between the averages of population divided by square root of their variances so what was the variance of difference of means it was sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 it's the square root okay so so you just so what's the moral of the story difference of means we can approximate with the normal random variable z like this with this expression and approximately it's a standard normal random variable note one is very important if both n1 and n2 are greater or equal 30 so if your sample sizes in both populations are greater than or equal to 30 then the normal approximation for the distribution of difference of means is a very good approximation these are all approximations huh? when underlying distributions underlying distributions means your population distributions basic distributions are not too far away from the normal so if your basic distributions are also normal distributions and at the same time both the sample sizes are greater or equal 30 you can apply this extended central limit theorem to the difference of means of samples second note says that if both populations are normal then x1 bar minus x2 bar has a normal distribution no matter what sizes of n1 and n2 are there okay so if your basic populations are normal populations means their random variable is following a normal distribution curve then you are independent of whatever are your sizes of samples you can apply this extension of central limit theorem to those difference of means so in these two cases you can apply example hmm? the example on this concept so let us see this example electric light bulbs bulbs of manufacturer a now you are having first manufacturer say a have a mean lifetime of 1400 hours and the standard deviation is 200 hours while those of the manufacturer b so another manufacturer of bulbs is there which is having mean lifetime of his bulbs 1200 hours with a standard deviation of 100 hours okay so we are having two different populations this is understood the first population is manufacturer a 
with its with his bulbs having whatever mean and standard deviation is given and the another population is of the bulbs from the another manufacturer b having their uh, his mean and standard deviation as stated if the random sample of 125 bulbs of each of each brand so what you are going to do from first manufacturer his or her bulbs you are going to pick up a random sample of 125 bulbs and from manufacturer b also you are going to pick up a random sample of 125 bulbs so what is your sample size n1 and n2 n1 and n2 hmm sample size sanga or we can say it as n suffix a and n suffix b current a from manufacturer a and manufacturer b if you are saying it, it's more clear if i use these notations n a and n b n so they are not different here huh? sometimes they might be different the sample sizes might differ or might be same whatever 125 125 bulbs huh? from each brand so n1 or n a n suffix a is the sample size from first manufacturer which is so each na each each means both are having same sample sizes of 125 bulbs and we are going to test those samples of 125 bulbs from each manufacturer then they are asking you what is the probability that the brand a bulbs will have a mean lifetime that is at least 160 hours more than brand B bulbs. Now here can you understand that I am comparing mean lifetime of bulbs from manufacturer A and manufacturer B. I am comparing what? Well finding probability. The probability of what is asked? Probability of mean lifetime of brand A bulbs should be at least 160 hours more than brand B. So here actually we are comparing XA bar and XB bar. What is XA bar? What is XA bar? XA bar is the random variable of mean lifetime of A brands from manufacturer A yes and XB bar is the sample mean of bulbs from B brand okay and we are going to compare it and I have to find the probability so can you express A part in our statistical notations and B part also in our notation A part kasa express kartal probability language madhe what we have to find I have to find out the probability of something what what is that something the probability that brand a bulbs will have a mean lifetime I know XA bar is the mean lifetime of brand a bulbs okay And XB bar manje kaya? Mean lifetime of brand B bulbs. And what they are asking you, they are asking you to find out the probability that brand A bulbs will have a mean lifetime that is at least 160 hours more than the brand B bulbs. So, te kasa express karanar probability language madhe. Probability of XA bar minus XB bar greater than equal to. Or can I say that XA bar means mean lifetime of brand A bulb should be at least means greater equal. Am I right? At least, no? Lakshateta ka? 
ब्रांड ए बल्ब विल हैव इट्स मीन लाइफ टाइम आई नो ब्रांड ए बल्ब लाइफ टाइम आई डिनोटेड बाय एक्स ए बार सो एक्स ए बार शुड बी ग्रेटर दैन और इक्वल टू वॉट एक्स बी बार प्लस वन सिक्स हाँ इट हैज टू बी एट लीस्ट वन सिक्सटी मोर दैन द सेकेंड ब्रांड इट्स मीन लाइफ टाइम सो दिस इज माई क्वेश्चन you should be always able to express the question in probability language correctly if your question is correct if your expression is correct then only your answer will be correct it's quite obvious and therefore so in other words i have to find the probability that x a bar minus x b bar should be greater equal what 160 now you tell me what is your random variable is looking like what is your random variable whose value is greater equal 160 is the difference between means no so it is a sampling distribution of difference of means barobar it's a sampling distribution of difference of means difference of mean lifetimes so which theorem you will apply so this theorem this part so i can normalize x a bar minus x b bar with the difference of means and divided by sigma 1 square by n1 sigma 2 square by n2 square root so how will you write z tell me z kasa linear manje yala yala tumhi approximate karnar kashane normal random variable z ne how to normalize i told you just now extension of central limit theorem to the difference of means that you need to apply so what is the mean that you will take for difference of means mu xa bar minus xb bar is actually the difference between the population means so so apan mu a and mu b manu shakto doesn't matter so what is the mean lifetime of first manufacturer lifetime it's so, so what is mu a mu a is 1400 hours and what is uh, very so, so, sorry this is standard deviation so this is sigma a which is 200 and what is uh, mu b 1200 and what is the standard deviation which i denoted by sigma b Hundred. Just substitute the values. Okay. So mu a minus mu b is one four zero zero minus one two zero zero, which is equal to two hundred hours. So this will be the mean of difference of means. So this is the first thing that you note. Secondly, sigma x a bar minus x b bar. Both the th things are in the suffix. Huh? So so it means I am finding. the standard deviation of difference of means which is sigma a square by n1 plus sigma b square by n2 sigma a square ka hai 100 hai ka besar liye n1 sample size is are 125 which we have already noted sigma b ka hai what is the standard deviation of second manufacturer bulbs its data is varied 200 hai na mala he calculation sanga do it on your calculator and tell me the answer bola Hmm? Am I audible? Twenty. Yes, ma'am. Twenty is there, ka? Ha, correct. Yes, twenty hours is the standard deviation of difference of means. 
Now how will you approximate? Now this is your third step. अतः approximate करा z ने. So z we know is x a bar minus x b bar. So it's a difference of means minus mu a minus mu b divided by square root of sigma a square by n one plus sigma b square by n two. अतः मैं फक्त constant values टकती है. So x a bar minus x b bar. So difference of means minus mu a minus mu b का आल होता है two hundred that I am substituting over here divided by square root of नहीं तुम ही मतलब square root ऐसा नहीं लगता which is twenty right so what should be there in the denominator just twenty yeah हाँ so this is your normalized random variable set of difference of means but what you need to find I have to find out the probability that x a bar minus x b bar is greater or equal one sixty. So what you will do? You approximated it with the normal random variable. So what you do is you find out z corresponding to one sixty. Correct. So what is that z? Yes. हाँ, so so it is one sixty minus आता जो usually करता है तो करता है करता है अपन so you have solved many problems on normal probability distribution using normal probability distribution so it's minus forty by twenty ना which is minus two correct four हाँ so आता अपन क्या करूँ याद परत में लीते so the probability that x a bar minus x b bar the difference of means is at least 160 is same as the probability that z is greater than minus 2. I can write equality also, but even if I don't write equality, even if I omit just one point on the horizontal line, it is not going to affect the probability because that counts the probability of a rectangle having width 0. So, if the equality is strict, it is not usual. Now you have to look at your normal distribution tables and you just tell me this value because you know normal distribution table gives you values towards the left side of z. So therefore we do 1 minus that. So is it 0 point chi ahi z less equal minus 2? 0.0228 ahi kadachit. And the difference is therefore 0.977. So the probability that the mean lifetime of brand A bulbs is at least 160 hours more than brand B bulb is 0.9772. So it's a high probability. 97%. Hmm? Near about 98% of brand A bulbs will have their lifetime 160 more than the brand B bulbs. So now you tell me uh, which brand you will choose. Brand A. Brand A. Huh. Why? What is the reason? What is the reason? We have more, more lifetime. Huh. Huh. So, brand A bulb we will choose because its lifetime is better than brand B bulbs. Okay, manufacturer A will, in, I am in favor of manufacturer A. आता मैं क्या कंक्लूड के लो? What I concluded that brand A is more better to purchase. Brand A bulbs are more better for me to purchase because lifetime is more, ना? Of course I will in favour of brand A. So I concluded something using probability theory. This process is called as statistical inference. ओके हे जे काही आपण चाललंय हे दिस इज दिस इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज अ डिसिजन मेकिंग थिअरी आय कॅन डिसाइड समथिंग युजिंग अ प्रोबॅबिलिटी थिअरी एनी हाऊ सो आय होप नाव यू कॅन डू बी पार्ट बी पार्ट करताल सिमिलरली वन ट्वेंटी टू फिफ्टी अवर्स मोर इफ आय वॉन्ट मेन लाईफ टाईम ऑफ ब्रँड एबल दॅन ब्रँड बी कॅन यू डू बी पार्ट ऑन सिमिलर लाईन्स येस मॅम हाँ, so tomorrow I am going to ask you the answer of this B part. Okay, so yeah, I am having few minutes with me. So let me just. Actually, I wanted to complete this part yesterday only, but yesterday 
there were lots of issues today also there are lots of issues anyway everybody is facing uh yeah so ha mala ek point clear karaycha hota ithe ki majhya lakshat aala kal ki yesterday we were solving one example and i ask you the formula for the sample variance to mala koni tari kay sangitlo kal sample variance cha formula sanga mala what is meant by variance suppose sample points ahet x1 x2 xn ठीक है यू आर हैविंग सपोज एन सैम्पल पॉइंट्स हाउ विल यू फाइंड द सैम्पल वेरियंस सपोज दिस इज युअर सैम्पल हाउ विल यू फाइंड सैम्पल वेरियंस समझा न्यू एक्स इज सपोज युअर मीन सैम्पल मीन सैम्पल मीन का न्यू एक्स सैम्पल वेरियंस फॉर्म्यूला का तो या केस मध्य इतना मी कशाने डिवाइड करती है एन मैनस वन एक बी केयरफुल पॉइंट का घेती है कारण काल मैं जाक्चर मध्य तरी मैं एन ने डिवाइड कराए स बरोबर बट बट यू प्लीज कीप दिस थिंग इन युअर माइंड दैट व्हेन आय फाइंड आउट अ सॅम्पल वेरियन्स आय एम गोईंग टू डिवाइड इट बाय एन मायनस वन अँड देर इज अ रिझन वाय वी डिवाइड इट बाय एन मायनस वन बिफोर आय एक्सप्लेन यू वाय आय एम डिवायडिंग इट बाय एन मायनस वन यू टेल मी वॉट इज द फॉर्म्युला फॉर पॉप्युलेशन वेरियन्स आर यू गेटिंग टू डिफरंट थिंग्स सो पॉप्युलेशन वेरियन्स अ फॉर्म्युला सांगा आता हा सॅम्पल वेरियन्स आहे हे पॉप्युलेशन इज द आउटर सेट द पॉप्युलेशन आहे पी आणि सॅम्पल समजा एस आता आपण सॅम्पल वेरियन्सचा फॉर्म्युला लिहिला आता मला पॉप्युलेशन वेरियन्स म्हणजे बिगर सेटचा फॉर्म्युला सांगा सेम नोटेशन घेते मी मुद्दाम पॉप्युलेशन मध्ये सुद्धा तुम्हाला एन पॉइंट आहेत समजा एन इज व्हेरी लार्ज पॉप्युलेशन डिवाइड बाय एन हा That's the difference. So, इथे काय करायचं एक्स आय मायनस एक्स बार एक्स बार म्हणजे पॉप्युलेशन मेन म्हणते मी डिवायडेड बाय एन सो काय लक्षात ठेवायचं पॉप्युलेशन वेरियन्स लिहिताना किंवा कॅल्क्युलेट करताना इन द डिनॉमिनेटर यू आर हॅव्हिंग एन अँड सॅम्पल वेरियन्स वेन यू कॅल्क्युलेट यू आर नॉट डिवायडिंग बाय एन बट यू आर रिड्युसिंग युअर डिनॉमिनेटर बाय वन means you are dividing it by n minus 1 and the reason behind this is your xi xi means here the sample points are nearer to mu x bar than x bar sometimes for some samples current it is not that you are going to choose one just one sample now i may have n different samples so suppose these suppose this is s2 second sample this is s1 is the first sample these points are so x bar is here say for example x bar is a population mean so uh, the, the the sample points inside s2 might be far away in than x bar than the sample points in s1 so in this case i'll be having a great difference between the population mean and the sample mean from second sample for first sample they might be nearer to the population mean x bar okay so therefore the numerator of sample variance means this as the difference between xi and mu x mu x is a sample mean it will be very very less so the numerator quantity will be less and sample variance i denote it by s square s square is the notation for the sample variance and what is the notation for population variance sigma square sigma square is the notation for the population variances okay so that also please note s square is the notation for sample variance sigma square is the notation for population variance in population variance we divide by n in sample variance we divided by n minus 1 the reason is that x i will be closer to mu x bar than that of x bar for some samples in that case your numerator quantity of addition of squares will be less but what is the statistician aim is 
एस स्क्वेर शुड बी नियर टू सिग्मा स्क्वेर एस स्क्वेर वैल्यू फॉर ऑल ऑलमोस्ट फॉर ऑल सैम्पल्स आई विल ट्राई टू रिलेट और ट्राई टू गो नियर एंड नियर टू सिग्मा स्क्वेर देर फोर द ओनली थिंग इन माई हैंड इज रिड्यूसिंग द डिनोमिनेटर एंड देर फोर द स्टेटिस्टिशन रिड्यूस डिनोमिनेटर बाय वन some statisticians still still till now they are not going to divide some statisticians are not dividing it by n minus 1 they divide by n only for sample variance also but then your sample variance may differ in a large quantity than your population variance yeah, but why by one only you could yeah, by that is, yes 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 that is this is yeah this is standard as there are many research papers also the people are doing research on this topic so in many practical situations if you divide it by n minus 1 it is what you can say sufficient even if you reduce your denominator further by minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 and so on it is not going to uh, what you can say impact on much on the difference between s square and sigma square is less so even if you divide by n minus 1 by reducing n by just quantity 1 it is sufficient for the statistician many are not hearing and many statisticians are still saying that divide by n only but as per our textbook volpole they have given sample variance in this it's a definition only actually research is still you may find many research papers and this correction this is called as a sample variance we are correcting it this correction is called as bessels correction tumhi fakto google varti jaun ह्यावर टाकू शकता बेसल्स करेक्शन मीन्स वॉट बेसल्स करेक्शन इज दिस करेक्शन बेसल इज द स्टेटिस्टिशियन हू हेज केम आउट विथ दिस रिजल्ट सैम्पल वेरियंस यू कैन करेक्ट बाय रेड्यूसिंग युअर डिनॉमिनेटर बाय वन ओके सो इट्स अ बेसल्स करेक्शन इट इज नॉट आय एम करेक्टिंग इट ओके सो दिस रैंडम वेरिएबल actually it's a parameter that you can associate it with the sample then s square is this just now we have i have just written it in a sigma summation notation just now we have denoted it then in this case s square is called as unbiased estimator of sigma square sigma square is the variance of population so what is meant by unbiased estimator unbiased estimator of a parameter any parameter in general you can consider is a is an estimator whose expected value is equal to the parameter so what is a parameter whose value you are expecting over here which has to be equal to your original parameter a parameter is the population variance 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 is a parameter what is the estimator s square is the estimator and what i'm what i'm trying to do i'm trying to approximate s square with sigma square which is the population variance okay so it's a parameter so s square is in this case is an unbiased estimator of the population variance i think my time is over yes so the chi square distribution and so on i will consider we'll see on thursday thank you